What's going on everyone? It is me with ADHD. So I just got back from the Ukraine and I just missed all of the travel stuff going on in Europe by mere hours. And I also am just coming out of being quarantined, quarantined, quarantined by my work. So let's talk about all that. Before we do that though, make sure that you subscribe, click the bell icon, stay up to date with all of my new content. So yeah, I just went to the Ukraine. It was an impromptu trip from work to follow some nursing students who were gonna go work at a rehab facility for people with disabilities out there. The Ukraine, by the way, is so cool. The buildings in Kyiv when we arrived there were these like huge multi-story apartments everywhere. It was so huge. Everything just was like all these multi-story buildings. It was amazing. And the air was so cold. That really good cold, you know, when you breathe in and it's like so crisp and nice. It was so good. It just reminded me of how much I miss cold air. I know that sounds really weird, but I do. I miss the cold air. It's just so fresh. Like California is great and all, but nothing beats that feeling. I'm telling you. Anyway, as we traveled out of the city, the buildings quickly changed and like the next minute we'd gone from these huge buildings to being surrounded by fields with these little old stone houses. It was so different. Our driver barely spoke any English so we used a translator app for all of our speaking to them. Although the funniest thing happened we were sat at our hotel right and we're eating breakfast with our driver and he looks over at my water bottle we haven't like said anything all morning and he points at my water bottle at a sticker on there and he goes uh father right dude I really wish that I'd said yes in that moment. I feel like it would be so funny. I don't know which part is funnier. The fact that he thought that Dwight Schrute is my father or the fact that he thought that I carried around a water bottle with a huge sticker of my dad's face on it. Like what? It was even funny is later on he took us to a restaurant and he got us this like native dish called Bosch, which is actually a beet soup. I couldn't help but sit there and think about how proud my new father Dwight Schrute would have been with that meal. But the rest of the trip was out in like the remote areas of Ukraine and it was such a beautiful, cool cultural experience. We saw like big World War monuments, old Soviet reminders of like another time long past, especially in the areas that we were in anyway. We saw this really cool trumpet band that played um, Mambo Number no. 5. Uh, I thought that was really weird that they were playing that, but it was awesome. Uh, we also saw various different walks of life out there in the Ukraine, and it was powerful, and it just, it was, it was, it, that's all I could say is it's powerful. I also met the most wonderful people out there and I made some new friends that are friends for life and I will not forget them in a hurry. So that's all about the trip. Now we came back on our trip on the 11th. I think it was the 11th, yeah. Now flying over there to the Ukraine, I promised Laurel that I was gonna wear a mask in the airports and on the planes, right? We have a few of those um, N95 masks, so I agreed to do it. When we got to LAX, first off, I have never in my life seen LAX so dead as it was. There was like nobody there. We breezed through TSA in like, I don't know, 10 minutes. Like it normally takes like an hour to get through there. I thought that was really crazy. So we made our way through anyway, and then barely anyone, by the way, was wearing a mask on the, on the trip out there. So this was like 11 days before. I wore my mask the entire journey, that's 10 and a half hours on the first plane to Amsterdam, four hours in a layover in Amsterdam, and then another four hours on a plane to Ukraine. Now, I don't know if you guys have worn one of those masks before, but it was so hot and uncomfortable. I literally hated it. Another reason why the fresh Ukraine air was so good. <laughs> By the end of our trip, we'd heard a little bit of information about what was going on with the COVID-19 pandemic and 
that it had got worse and by the time we got to the Ukrainian airport we'd heard rumors that other places in Europe had possibly started to close their borders and had restrictions we hopped on our plane and literally as about we were about to set off I got messages and I got news that the Ukraine had implemented their new rules right there and then that shuts down schools, cinemas, public gatherings, all kinds of stuff. It was really crazy right as we were leaving. So then the moment we landed in Amsterdam, we hear that European countries are all doing the same thing as well. It was, I honestly, I've never seen anything like it. And in Amsterdam, a lot more people this time were wearing masks. I can tell you that much. Almost every other person was wearing some kind of mask. Anyway, four hours later, we got on our next plane. And again, as I'm sat there on the runway on this plane, about to put my phone into airplane mode, I see the news article that says that Trump is now implementing a travel ban on Europe coming to America. So now we're like sat there wondering if we're even gonna get into the country when we get there. Of course, he's full of crap and he misspoke about the fact that American citizens and green card holders are allowed to come in, so we were okay. But we flew into JFK before we got into LA and the atmosphere was a little bit different there. Uh, there wasn't many masks at all, nobody really seemed to be bothering about it. None of the staff had them, which was surprised. When I asked one of them, she was like, Oh, it's airborne now, so it won't make a difference. And I sat there literally and I couldn't help but think like, well, first of all, it's not airborne. It's spread through respiratory droplets. That doesn't mean that it's airborne. And two, if it was airborne, wouldn't a mask help with that? Like, I just couldn't understand her logic anyway. We flew back to LA and then the next morning, my work informed me that I was quarantined for five working days. So right the way up until Thursday of this week. Crazy. It's so crazy to think that all that stuff happened. And it was, it felt the entire time like it was moments behind us. As we were flying from one place, it was all happening behind us. And the next place happening behind us. And it was like... It was so weird. It was such a bizarre feeling to, to have all this kind of stuff happening. And, you know, locally, it's, uh, I've made it through my quarantine time and I'm not sick right now. I mean, I know that they say now it's like two weeks to, to figure out if you're sick or not. Uh, it's been over a week and I feel pretty good. It's a week and a half now, I think, uh, on Saturday. So, yeah, and I don't have any symptoms. But what's crazy to me is about this whole COVID-19 thing, right, is the fact that they're saying, like, so so all the health advisors, uh, the CDC, uh, H, WHO, uh, anybody you talk to, even news outlets, everyone, they're all saying self-quarantine. That's what you need to do. You need to give people space, you know, six feet away from them, and, you know, like, just keep away from people, right? And even though that's the advice that they're giving, just look at this from Costco where I live. It is unbelievable. It's like people saw those news articles and saw all that and decided that instead of distancing themselves from people, they're gonna cram themselves into stores like sardines and buy up all the toilet paper in the country. Like what? Like, why? First of all, right, I don't really understand why toilet paper, of all the things that you could buy, food, uh, yeah, I kind of get the water thing a little bit, even though you all have perfectly good taps and probably water filtered, uh, you know, those drinks things in your house. Uh, you know, we have a fridge one on the door of our fridge, so... I don't understand why people are like panic buying all the water as if they're gonna shut the water off to the country. And also, I don't understand the toilet paper thing because quarantine anywhere has been said that it's gonna be about 14 days maximum. If you need like 30 rolls of toilet paper to last you 14 days, maybe you should be seeing a doctor because there's something wrong with your bowels. Like, like for real. So I just don't get it. I don't, 
I don't understand that mentality. Uh, I would rather do what they've told us to do and just kind of keep my distance from people, wash my hands for 20 seconds, which is singing happy birthday twice, uh, which everybody probably knows by now. But yeah, and, and that's, I would rather stick to those rules than I would do in this crazy panic buying. Like I'm some kind of, um, what are they called? Those end of the world people who uh, prepare, prepare for it. Um, doomsday, doomsday preppers, that's what they're called. Anyway, so that was my experience with COVID-19 following us around and visiting the Ukraine. Let me know if you guys have had some crazy experiences with COVID-19 yet. I bet all your stores are sold out of toilet paper, if anything. Uh, let me know down below. Uh, like the video if you did. I will be back to posting regularly now that I'm back from my trip. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.